We're here today to record some teaching material on how to actually put on and take off personal protective equipment, don and doff as they call it, PPE. This is of course extremely important nowadays. Uh, it's extremely important normally, but now this has been really emphasized by the fact that we've got a COVID-19 pandemic going on around the world, which is spread by droplet and contact possibly aerosol in some procedures. So it's essential that as clinicians, nurse, doctor, paramedic, we're completely aware of how we protect both ourselves, our colleagues and our patients. Okay, so um, now you're gonna teach me the next part, is that next level of PPE yeah, for, what is it, aerosol? So AGP, so yeah. aerosol generating procedures. Fine, okay. Yeah. So for adults, um, mm. that's classed as non-invasive ventilation, high flow nasal prongs, intubation and extubation, and certainly any suction that goes along with those procedures as well. Right, okay. For kids, the ASM guideline is a little bit more broad. Um, it also includes um, throat exam, um, removal of foreign bodies from the nose and throat mm. and nasogastric tube insertion, typically because kids can't really control um, or are aware of their coughing, yeah. um, sneezing processes. Of course, we're also not doing things like uh, high flow oxygen, we're not doing um, non-invasive ventilation, those sort of things. Are they considered to be aerosol generating they procedures are. as well? Yeah, they are. So we may need to do nebulisation in certain situations, right. but they need to be ideally in negative pressure rooms and right. staffed by staff wearing the aerosol generating procedure of PPE. Okay. Um, we're avoiding NIV, certainly here in this facility, yeah. and high flow nasal prongs. Um, yeah. and organising other processes to move those patients through to other areas of the hospital. Okay, so these are all considered to be AGPs they as are. well. Yeah. Um, what about actually high, f sort of uh, high flow oxygen through a, uh, you know, a, a non-rebreather non mask? Non mask yeah, so anything over six litres yeah. is really considered to be potentially aerosolising. Okay. So we need to be very aware of right. the oxygen requirements of our patients and it will probably lead to earlier intubation of patients who may have been on um, higher flows for a bit longer. Yeah, okay, okay. So, um, right, so what you're gonna teach me now is this next level of PPE, which is actually uh, hopefully protection against any aerosols that we might yes. generate when we do that. Yeah, okay. so I'll teach you um, what is our current process here in this facility. Okay. Um, the CEC advises the same as what we did before, but translation to a or transition to a P P2 or an N95 mask okay. rather than just a surgical mask. Right. We here in this facility, specifically for intubating patients or those really high risk um, patients with aerosol generating procedures, we also use a hood as right. well. So just just tell me what's the difference between the N95 mask and a surgical mask. So the N95 has um, a lot higher protection against finer particles, um, whereas the, the surgical face mask doesn't have the seal at the sides. It's not really meant to seal. Yeah. It's more meant to catch those droplets. Um, Coming from the person, from the person who's wearing it. Okay, yeah. okay. whereas the N95 fits and protects from yes. inhalation. Things. Yes. Right, yeah. okay. Okay, all right, so again, uh, the same procedure occurs. We start with hand hygiene. So okay. if you're gonna use a sink or you're gonna use um, an alcohol-based hand rub. We need to just ensure that the alcohol-based hand rub that we're using has greater than 70% alcohol. Right, okay. okay. So again, first step is going to be popping the gown on. So okay. Nice. When you're okay. dry. All right. Not rushing through, of course, making sure my hand hygiene is properly done. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so we've done our hand hygiene yep. and our gown is on now. Mm -hmm. So remembering our layering, we will either put gloves on now or okay. we'll put the mask on now. Right. So let's pop the mask on because some people find it difficult to pop the mask on with gloves on, just you lose that tactile. Okay. So we're gonna put use the N95 mm -hmm. P2 masks. Okay, so, so N95 mask. They're much more fitted, um, much less comfortable, um, oh. but very important. Okay, okay. so chin in. Stretch over, separate your um, your ties. Okay, so chin in. Oh my goodness. And separate them so you got one low, one high. Okay, is that right? And yep. And then again, we're going to push onto our cheeks rather than fit to our nose. They only do one size. They only do one size. One size fits no one. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's what we have. Okay. okay. All right. So uh, again, remembering our layering. The next thing that we're going to put on here is our hood. Right, okay. 
So these mm. are part of our Tyvek suits for disaster. Um, so we've just taken the hood aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So really just rolling it up um, and then popping it over. Okay. I wonder whether I might turn the horses off. So. And there'll be a bit of fiddling. So we're we're right. outside the room. Oop. <laughs> there we go. Eventually. Okay. Eventually we'll get there. Okay. So it's important to try and make sure that it's around and there's no skin showing underneath the mask. Yeah. Yeah, and to the sides of the mask. So it really should just be the mask that you see and the eyes at the moment. So clearly this is where having a buddy comes in very useful. Yes. Okay. 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 Just spin around for me. So this is exposed on you at the moment. All right. So that needs to come back. And okay. I'll get you to check me as well. Okay, yeah, you're yeah. covered. Okay. All right, so um, then we'll put our goggles on. We use different goggles for these procedures um, with the elastic straps yeah. because it helps to keep the hood in place. So ah. sometimes you'll find that when you're turning your head back and to the side to side, yeah. um, the hood will move and it will occlude your vision. Right, so okay. yeah. we use the elastic straps um, to help to keep it in place. Okay, so... Yeah. Got it. Yep. So you've just got your open here on the okay. side. So otherwise, that's pretty well protected. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yep. And our yep. last step is going to be our gloves. Right. Okay. So are we putting on the two pairs of oh, gloves? Oh yes, that's right. So. Um, particularly those um, staff members that will be involved in the intubation process or touching the patient during an aerosol generating procedure. Yeah. We work with a double gloving process. So right. we utilize the sterile gloves underneath just because they fit better. Okay. We're not using them because they're sterile. We're using them because of the fit. Okay. And then over the top of that, we'll then put on our non-sterile gloves. So the important thing is that um, we then will proceed into the room and we'll do our aerosol generating procedure. Okay. If you're the doctor or the nurse or the team leader involved in the intubation process, yep. after that process is completed, that outer layer of gloves needs to come off almost immediately. Right, so okay. then you don't potentially risk putting any of the mucose you know, mucus or any of the secretions that have been put onto your hands during that procedure yeah. onto other surfaces in the room or other staff in the room. Okay. So immediately after the aerosol generating procedure, you will take off your outer layer of gloves. Okay. All that work to get them on. All that work to, to get take them, them off straight away. Oops, so okay, yep. once again, turn them inside out. Yep. Yeah. And then you'll be left with um, your normal gloves for the yep. inside, so your normal one layer of gloves. Okay. Okay, so when we're finished with everything in the room and we need to look at doffing, okay. um, again, the first layer, you can clean these hands afterwards um, after taking the outer layer off. They are yep. clean. Yep. Um, and it's up to you if you think that they're going to be contaminated or not. Okay. Right. So on um, preparation to exit the room, yep. again, the next part that's dirtiest will be the gloves, so they will come off first. Okay. Those. And hand hygiene. Clean our hands. Okay. Okay. So then the next thing that should come off is the goggles. Okay. So, so these ones will need to be grabbed from the side. Right. And from the back. Yep. Pull up and pull push up, forward. Push forward. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then they, for us, these are left in our room to be cleaned, um, yep. but otherwise other sites may class them as disposable. And yep. then we clean our hands. And hygiene. Okay. And hygiene again. Okay. 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 So once that's done, yep. um, then we need to remove our hood. So right. coming from as far back as possible and right. underneath, we're going to come 
and bring it up over and forward. There is no way that hair is going to remain as it was. Okay. And then that will go into the bin. And? And hygiene. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so we've done all of this in the patient's clinical area again. Okay. So now the last thing that needs to come off is our gown. Right. So again, reaching as far behind as possible. Okay. And tear. Mm. Roll forward. Okay. Into the bin and hang your hands. Okay, in the bin. And so even though people might find it challenging, though, of course, it's important. You've got to do it the right way every time. You certainly right? do. It's about protecting yeah, us. Yep. OK, so now we're finished doffing um, inside the patient's clinical area. Yep. We're still protected from droplets from our cells and the aerosol generating procedures to into our cells. So now we need to step out um, of the clinical area right. um, into a dirty zone um, where we can then doff the mask. So these masks, there's a few different recommended ways to take them off. Um, the way that we find easiest is to grab them both, okay. sort of bring it to your forehead. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly what we want to avoid. Right. Yep. Okay. So it does take practice to get it to this point. Okay, so I'll again. show you how I do it. I'll just pop yeah. this one back on. Yeah. So grabbing both of them together, okay. coming to the forehead and pushing forward. It does take practice, so yeah. it just reinforces the importance of if you are wearing a mask and you think it's not an aerosol generating procedure and that yeah. you're not at risk, um, significant risk from the AGPs, yeah. use it as an opportunity to doff properly right. each and every time so yeah. that you're practicing this. Because that flick, yeah. we're all the first thing that we're all going to do is go, because <sighs> you can actually breathe after it, but yeah. that flick right. just means that it's straight back at you. Okay. So, yeah, look, obviously, once again, just emphasise the importance of learning how to do it properly, yeah. you know, to keep ourselves completely safe, even and though it seems... Yeah, it's, like, uh, it does, it's not natural. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, Catherine, let, it's, let me summarise to see if I've got right what we did. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, we're talking about um, droplet and contact PPE. Mm -hmm. So, we had that first level of PPE, which is going to be the gloves, the gown and the mask, with some eye protection. Um, and we, we donned it in a certain order, mm -hmm. of course, and then we doffed it in a certain order, bearing in mind the fact that the gloves are the dirtiest bit and come off first. Yes. Um, then we went to the second level of PPE, which is essentially used for any aerosol generating procedures, um, which uh, are obviously the things we think might be like intubation and uh, you know, non-invasive ventilation, but also, in fact, in paediatrics, we're thinking there might be other things as well, like examining ears and throat and that sort of stuff. And in that level, what we've done is that we've used two layers of gloves, we've used a gown, we've used a face covering, we've used an N95 mask instead of a surgical mask, and we've used a hood as well. And we have ensured that there's no space around that we can actually get any contamination on us. Correct. And the other thing that, that came through to me that was really important is the fact that this should always be done with a buddy mm -hmm. because we need to have somebody to check that everything is right the same way we would if we were going scuba diving or something. Yep. Yep. Okay. We want to protect each other. Absolutely. Yeah. So we know we're protecting the patients, but protecting each other is probably pretty important as well. Yeah, so, yeah of course. Um, right, uh, thank you very much for the time. I really appreciate the fact that you spent all this time teaching us and everybody else um, how to do this properly. And uh, hopefully people will find this really useful. No worries. All right, thanks, Catherine. No worries. Thank you for watching this teaching material on how to don and doff personal protective equipment. So we hope that you have found this interesting. We hope that you found it educational. And more than anything else, we hope that you now feel a little bit more secure about the way that you protect yourself, your colleagues and your patients as you go about your daily job.